Welcome to Access a Trader, the number one community for those who are committed to taking control of their trading in order to achieve success, profitability, and longevity. Thank you for joining us. Here's Dan Shapiro to help you find your edge, master your process, and own your future. Hey guys, good evening everybody. Welcome to another edition of uh, the AccessTrader.com uh, nightly wrap-up show. Hope everybody had a great weekend. Hope everybody had a good uh, trading day. Uh, if you are a uh, brand new to the channel, guys, thank you very much for finding us. Uh, all I think I ask is if you enjoy technical analysis, unbiased technical analysis, especially if you trade both sides of the market, you really uh, probably will get a good amount of value on a day-to-day uh, from this channel, if you're a long-term investor, 5, 10, 15, 20 years, not so much. But again, hey, to each his own, uh, and this is a judgment-free uh, zone. Uh, all I ask is if you could be so kind, click a like, share, subscribe, come aboard, and hopefully I could continue to bring value. So here's kind of where we are. And, and uh, every single time um, I start doing my research from the night before, I'm always playing devil's advocate. What if, right? What if? Uh, the last thing you always want to do when you're going into a trading session is to be one side bias. No matter what happens, I'm sticking to my guns. That's my conviction. Again, there's a big difference between conviction and being painted into a corner. Two different stories. And again, if you are nimble in this business, you get rewarded. If you are a stubborn mule, no matter what I'm long, no matter what I'm short, there's a good chance your shelf life is going to be uh, stopped premature. And that's always kind of the case, especially with people who try to think they're smarter than the market. That's why I always talk about be prepared, right? You have a bias going through the day. If that bias doesn't play out, be prepared on both sides of the market. And today was a perfect example. Now we'll get to uh, we'll get to that in a second. But I, I always like to play devil's advocate. And you know, we had this great, great V, pretty much V-shaped recovery. Uh, from the bottom, sellers got tired here, reclaimed the 50-day moving average. Again, if you've been following this uh, this broadcast for the last you know couple of months even, you, you're in nausea. You, you hate the word 50-day moving average, but that's kind of a reality. We reclaimed the 50-day moving average. We're on a great, great run uh, from this four, you know, basically from this 473 area uh, all the way to 485 in about five sessions. And now the last two out of three sessions, actually three out of three sessions, it's a little bit sticky, right? It's a little bit sticky. Here's the pro side of it, right? Let me get a quick sip. Right? You only, you only need one, right? So here's kind of the pro and the con of what I see happening for tomorrow. Here's the pro. We're above the 50-day moving average, and the thesis is as long as stocks are closing above the 50-day moving average, we remain bullish. Risk is on. And you can see here now, three days in a row, we've tested this light blue line, which is a 50-day moving average, and three days in a row, we bounce from it. That's the good news, right? Here's kind of where I play devil's advocate. And again, doesn't mean one way or another. It's just kind of how my feeble little brain works. Here's my problem, right? Once I could understand that we test twice, okay, I get it. But three times in three days testing the 50-day moving average I'm not in love with that. Not in love with that. Not saying we're going to crash tomorrow, but I'm not in love with what I'm seeing for three days in a row. You could turn around and go, well, Q's, the market in general, technology in general is just digesting its gains. I'm cool with that, right? Again, remember, I'm not a ball. I'm not a bear. I don't care which way this market goes, but I have to be a realist first. I have to be uh, looking at the market in reality versus the market that I want to, uh, to look at. And the way I'm thinking about it, the more I'm kind of just sitting there, kind of sipping my coffee and kind of going through the motions, getting mentally prepared for tomorrow's session, I'm kind of saying to myself, well, how many times can they hit the 50-day, touch the 50-day, bounce off the day without actually, well, losing the 50-day moving average? So it's something now in my mind, right? And when I spine to start forming an opinion, and the longer we can't rally off those levels, the higher my opinion starts to echo. And, and that's when I start looking for things instead of letting things play out. Uh, and normally that's a bad thing, but usually when, you, when you're testing the same area once, twice, three times, you really don't want to see it test the fourth time around. And that's kind of what I'm going to be looking for for the next couple of days. 
Going into tomorrow, yes, you still want to give the bulls the benefit of the doubt because, again, we are above the 50-day moving average. And, you know, you had all these big moves uh, last week. So we had this massive, massive rally uh, off the bottom, off the blah, 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 uh, 8 2 rally. But the longer we stay, with, the longer we continue to to test the 50-day moving average, it's like a dam, man. Eventually, the dam is going to break. So hopefully, it doesn't come to that case. And once I started looking at you know the, you know the, the macro levels and say all right let's see if there's a you know day four tomorrow that we test those levels I started looking at individual stocks like I do every single day and here's the pre- the picture right here's the picture of them all you have Microsoft right Microsoft is very very close to losing the last week's range you have AMD AMD guys lost the 50 day moving average today right so lost the 50 day moving average and lost last week's lows. Not good, right? Not a good thing. Not a good look. Uh, you have Meta. You guys remember we talked about Meta on the weekend update? Just in case if it loses the 10-day moving average, it lost it today. We had a great pivot from this 5, uh, 525 level all the way down to 515. Great, great pivot. Again, it lost It lost its whole week's worth of range. Again, that's not good. SMCI was my trade of the day today, right? This thing went just disaster. You know, it lost this whole 601, 600 area, just completely fell apart. Great, great move again. It lost its whole range as well. NVIDIA, to be determined. And the reason why I say to be determined, they are reporting Wednesday after the close. If there's going to be a lot of call buying. There's going to be a lot of dip buyers. But you saw today, it got down to the rising 10-day moving average. Here's why the 10-day moving average is important, just from the trading aspect. I don't know what the stock is going to do on earnings. I don't have a bit of opinion on what it's going to do on earnings. Here's the news flash. It's either going to go up or down on earnings, right? Believe me, you don't get this information just anywhere. But from the trading aspect, now what happens if the NASDAQ loses the 50-day tomorrow and the, and the video loses the 10-day? Can't this thing give us a trade back to the 50-day moving average? So the longer I started looking at charts, the longer I said to myself, wow, yeah, I get the bulls are resting, but what if, right? What if tomorrow we test the fourth time and the fourth time is the charm? Usually three times the charm, but what happens if it's the fourth time the charm? Tesla, right? Look at Tesla. Tesla gave back the 50-day moving average today. Now, what happens tomorrow, again, amuse me, what happens if we do lose the 50 day, you know, or the 50 day moving average on the NASDAQ 100 and Tesla loses last week's lows, right? Stocks being believe stocks straight from supply to supply, and demand to demand. Well, here's the next two demand zones. So again, I don't want to be Debbie Downer. I love a good bull market just like everybody else, but I am a realist, right? I am a realist. I've been doing this for north of 25 years, long effing 25 years. And all I see is reality, right? Whether your reality matches my reality or your reality matches what the market's reality is, that's a whole different conversation. You can negate everything I'm saying. You can move on with your date and that's fine and dandy. But remember, remember, technical analysis is not trying to, you know, trying to trick us. It's trying to guide us. It's trying to help us kind of, kind of get us woke, right? Is that, is that okay to say? I'm not, I'm not, I don't know if we're allowed to say the word woke. But more important is it puts us in a situation that you're trading from a position of strength instead of trading in a position of weakness that you have to guess. So are there names that look really, really good, right? MSTR had an inside day today, right? MSTR had an inside day today, still above the 50-day moving average. And I'm guessing the next time Bitcoin wakes up, this thing's going to move around. Still looks good, right? Still looks good. Google, you know, is holding up fairly well, you know, holding up, even though it's underneath supply, it's holding up fairly well. If the market does rally, I kind of like it, right? It's got rejected two out of three times uh, off this 100-day EMA. So again, it's holding up fairly well. Uh, a name, for example, like Robinhood, right? We talked about it on the weekend update. Robinhood, again, it's an inside day. This is bullish, right? Inside day, all it needs to, again, reclaim the 50-day movement. So there's, there's definitely a lot of names that look very good. So believe me, you know, if you're watching this video Don't for a second turn around and go, wow, Dan is bearish. I'm not bearish. I'm not bearish at all, but I am woke, right? Whether we're using that word the right way or not, I am woke. And if you are looking at the market from the point of reference from common sense, then it really should put you in a situation that you are prepared. And that's the name of the game uh, going into tomorrow. Uh, So here are the numbers. Here are the numbers that you have to write down. uh, And if you are a trader, these are very important numbers. So 
the last three days, the last three days, um, the QQQ, write this number down, held 473, right? That was literally the last three days worth of support. If we lose 473, we're going lower, all right? That, that's, you know, if, you, if you're in a position long and the Qs lose 473, you're not going to want to be long. But having said that, we get, with, there's no guarantee we're going to lose that level again, but we are going to be prepared. So write down this number, 473, 473, we'll get it down to 469. Other than that, I'm watching Tesla to last week's lows. I'm watching to see, uh, obviously, the Qs uh, give up this channel. I'll be watching NVIDIA uh, for a potential trade ahead of earnings. Uh, SMCI, I'm watching for another follow-through day. Um, so, you know, I want to make sure that, again, we are prepared from both sides of the market, uh, that you're not trading like, you know, you're not trading with your eyes wide shut. You're looking at the market from a reality point of view. And before you could become a professional trader or the trader of your dreams, which by the way, it doesn't exist. There's no such thing as a great trader. All of us are just less shittier as the years go by. That's a fact. Okay. I don't know about, you know, anybody on social media saying how great of a trader they're after two, three years, but I'm telling you, I'm just less of a shittier trader after year 25 than I was year 10, the year of year five. So nobody's trying to be perfect, but we are trying to be reasonable fiscally responsible. And the most important part is understanding where our surroundings are there to protect us, not to hurt us. Guys, have a great night, everybody. God bless. Hope everybody is doing well. And with God's help, I will see you all tomorrow on the field. Take care. Have a great, great night, everybody.